Bobby, it's a pleasure to have you. It's wonderful to be here. God bless you. Can you imagine I've been preaching 55 years? I've average speaking five times a week for 55 years. I tell people I'm living proof. Practice won't make perfect. But I'm telling you, I enjoy what I'm doing. What an honor it is to speak about the king and serve yes. the king. And that's, that's the desire of my heart. Here's what Paul said. I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Mm -hmm. I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with eloquent words of man's wisdom, but in a demonstration of the spirit's power so that your faith might not stand in the wisdom of man, but rather in the power of God. So listen, Amen. I taught Mexican and I, I, I just, the Lord told me, said, be who you are yielded to me. That's all God asks. Don't try to morph yourself into somebody else. Just be you and enjoy living. Uh, can I give us a verse? Here's a verse. Let's, let's let this be a verse that sink into our spirit. Psalms 84, 11. Psalms 84, 11 says, he will be a sun and a shield unto us. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those that are walking upright. He will give us present day favor, future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. Psalms 84, 11. Another wow. Psalm, Psalm 65, 11. Say it, Psalms 65, 11. He said, he crowns this year with his goodness and everywhere his chariot wheels roll, it drips with fatness. Oh, listen, God has a good plan. Did you read Jeremiah 29, 11? I know my thoughts I think towards you declares the Lord, thoughts of your success, not your failure. My intention is to bring you to a good end, not some kind of dismal demise. Did you know the happiest people I've ever met on earth are those that are serving the Lord? I uh, know I'm telling you, the most miserable people, the most miserable people I've ever met on earth, it's not the drug addict, it's not the prostitute, it's not the meth head, it's Christians trying to live lost. See, the Bible said a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. And so we want we want stability, don't we? We want to yes. come into the presence of God. In Psalm 1611, why well, sure it is. Psalm 1611 says, you will show me the pathway of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The yes. more we get to know about God, the Bible said it this way. Now, I quote fast. Uh, I used to quote, uh, you know, I'm used to speaking really <laughs> fast. Why do you talk so fast, Bobby? Well, I used to have to buy television time, and it was very expensive. So I talked real fast, so I'd get my money's worth. But since Steve and uh, these the Elijah List is paying for this, we could just slow down a minute. And, no, no, I just talk. <laughs> you can't help it. No, I got a lot to say. And listen, this is the day the Lord has made. We're in the kingdom for such a time as this. Now, let me tell you, there's something better than that. You say, Bobby, what could be better than being in the kingdom for such a time as this? Here it is. The kingdom is in us for such a time as this. We learned in the shepherd's rod for 2023 that the evil forces were ruling and raging against the saints of God until the ancient of days stands, renders a verdict in behalf of the saints of God and said the saints will prevail. And the time has come for the saints mm -hmm. to take back the kingdom. And the Bible said, if you catch a thief, you can command him to pay back sevenfold. So in the book of Joel, he said, I will restore all that the canker worm has consumed. And so we're going to have a great time. Now, around me, if you lose your breath, you'll lose your turn. So you just jump in <laughs> whenever you want to and say, Bobby, time out. Okay. But I, I want to talk about love anything it. that's on I your love heart. It. Bobby, I, I want to start. Um, I know we're going to, you have a word for Israel, but before we get to that, um, we just started our testimonial page where people can come on and share their testimonies. And I thought I'd love to ask Bobby Connor just an amazing radical testimony of something you've seen God do with your own eyes that will blow us away. Cause I know you probably oh, have a ton of, Oh them. man. Yeah. Here, here's one of my favorite ones. Uh, uh, we were down in Mexico City in the Civic Center there, and they said there were 72,000 people there. I, I don't know about all that, but there was a ton of people there. And the Lord began to heal. And here comes a, a father bringing a, a, a daughter to to front to the front of the church, a little bitty uh, girl sitting on his arm. And uh, I, I, I don't speak Spanish, and, and I couldn't communicate with him in his language, but his eyes were pleading with me, wanting help. And the little girl he had on his arms, she was dark headed, had real dark, shiny hair and bright uh, uh, 
dark eyes and pretty. And I'm thinking, what, what does he need? And then all of a sudden, the little girl turns her face around. And, oh, man, she didn't even have a face. She had, it was gone. It didn't, ha didn't have a face. You could see her jaw. You could see her the oh. and her tongue. All this, oh man, my I, my heart just just turned in like this. I said, Lord, what will you do? And while I'm standing there now, I'll tell you how it happened. I don't understand all the ways of God, but they're perfect. While I'm standing there looking at this little girl and thinking about it, I, I, I transposed out of the civic center to her room. She's just a baby now, but now when I see her in her room, she might be three or four, but she's old enough to know she's deformed. And she's mm -hmm. over at the corner of her room, putting her head, beating her head against the, the, mm -hmm. the wall in her room. Then it changes again. Uh, she she's just really uh, distraught because she can see that she's very deformed. And I see her uh, in, now in a trance. I see her standing out on a busy, busy street, buses and trucks and stuff like this coming. And she launches her, her, herself out in front of the trucks and it just grinds her down. And then I'm back in the Civic Center. And I said, oh, God, what will you do? He said, uh, oh, man, it, it's this real setting here as it was. And he said, I want you to take your thumb and stick your thumb in the hole in her face and move your thumb. And oh man, I did, and God grew a new face just like wow. that. I tell you, yeah, I got so weak, my knees so would hold me up. I had two of my guys with me, Rod and Todd, and I'm telling you, it stunned me. But see, that little wow. girl never realized that she was deformed. She'll never realize that she didn't have one side of her face. See, that's a good God in me. And I'm so wow. thankful for that father bringing that little girl to the front. And God can do anything. There's nothing yes. too difficult for God. Genesis 18, 14 says, is there anything too difficult for God? The answer is found in Job 42, 2. No, he can do all things. I can do all mm -hmm. things. And he can. And I'm telling you what, now he's a miracle working God. So yes. that was one thing that stuck with me. Then there's a little boy that came and oh my, he honestly didn't look like a human being, uh, looked like mm -hmm. an alien forehead, very thin, no eye sockets. So his eyes were down like this. And oh my, he came down. I screamed in a meeting, God's power is here to heal. And you know, uh, he, uh, I caught a, a glimpse of him and he didn't even look like a human. And uh, wow. boy, it stunned me. It, he did, I, I don't have, don't know how uh, to describe the, the, uh, the dilemma he was in, but I, it stunned me. Wow. And I just screamed, God's power, here's the heal. So I looked down at the little boy. Now, I remember his eyes had to roll up like lizard eyes. And he, I said, uh, do you believe God can heal you? And here's what he said. He said, I'm down here, ain't I? The Lord said, that's the best answer you'll ever get. I'm oh down here, ain't I? Little old bitty thing. His arms wow. stood the ground like this. Didn't look like a human. Do you believe God can heal you? I'm down here, ain't I? I put my hand on him and watch this. He, he, he fell over his forehead, started growing right. And uh, later on, my wife and I wow. go back to that place where the little kid was. And a teenager runs up and grabs me and hugs me. And it's him. He was <gasps> as normal. He was as normal Praise as anything. Praise God for him yeah. more. Wow. See, listen. Listen, the, wow. God, yes. he cats out devils. It's it's cool. It's cool watching God work. He can do anything. He can put the pieces together. There's nothing so so crazy tore up that he can't fix it. All things are yes. working together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. God's not up there going, oh. I never saw it coming. No, he's got everything under control. He yes. is in charge. And the Bible said the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. So those are yes. a couple of the miracles that uh, uh, when I talk about them, that they stir me up. It's just so amazing. Uh, and wow. uh, we watched him cast out devils. Uh, wow. Oh, boy. And God, there's plenty of devils to cast out. And, and we need to be bold and brave. And, and he wants us to cast out devils because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. And we're not going to give the devil a free run. No, the Bible says whatever you bind on earth will have been bound for you in heaven. And so we need yes. to start exercising. And that's part of the shepherd's rod uh, for 2024. We've got to start exercising the authority, the divine authority that God has given us. So we're going to have a time. And I think what if you never prayed? Or what if you no. never oh, stepped yeah. out? Oh, I mean, you think about that, right? Because 
so many of us think like, oh, well, I can't pray for them. Nothing's going to happen, you know, and instead of just trusting in God and knowing that he's the healer, not us, we miss that opportunity. So we need to be bold and courageous, like you said. That's it. Joshua 1 9. It says, be bold, be brave, be very courageous. Go do what you're called to do because you're not going by yourself. Who's going with you? Jeremiah 20 11. Jeremiah 20 11 said, I, the, the Lord, mighty in battle, go with you. And I'm telling you, and he said he's going to be with us and he will be with us. Amen. You'll never get the conflict. He's not there. He goes Amen. before us. Psalms yes. 91 said, the, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my foe, come up to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fall. The whole army, a whole army would encamp against me. I'll not fear. See, greater yeah. seed is in us than it is in yes. the world. We're more yes. than a conqueror. Behold, uh, behold, I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and it'll in no wise hurt you. Isn't that Amen. amazing? If we would just stop uh, underestimating who God is in us, uh, yes. we've got to take the lids of limitation off. Genesis 18, 14, is anything too difficult for God? Job 42, 2 says, no, I, anything he sets his heart and his hands to do cannot be stopped. Oh boy, yes, he's amen. able to do, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could yes. ask or even dare to imagine yes. how, according to the power that works within us. Philippians 4, 13 said, what? I can do all things through Christ who infuses me with inner strength. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiencies. So let's get into the Bible so the Bible can get into us and we'll be strong. That's, that's yes. how you build your faith. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The Bible yes. said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because we don't study the Bible. we got to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So very imperative, very important. We get into the Bible because the Bible is not, not print on paper. The Bible is a person. It says in your Bible, and the word, Jesus, became flesh and yes. dwelt among us. And we beheld Amen. his glory as the only begotten son of God. So get into the word. Let the word get into you. It'll build you up. Oh, yes. man. Psalms 119, verse 105 said, thy word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. Psalms 139, verse 130 said, the entrance, the penetration of God's word gives light. It gives me a grasp mm -hmm. and a comprehension of the ways of God. God wants us to light up the world, walk in the light as he's in the light. And the yes. word is the word is a lot. It's a lamp to our feet. It says in the Bible, well, I, I'm talking fast, but it says in the Bible, he will light my lamp and it'll flood my whole life with light. And so mm -hmm. it's important to, to walk in the light of God. Yes. And he never slumbers. He never sleeps. And Jesus yeah. is our mediator. And right now, I think oh, even over Israel, as we talk about Israel a little bit, God doesn't slumber or sleep. He, oh, no. he knows exactly what's happening. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, Lord, you may talk about some of the events taking place in Israel. He said, yes. And one of the things we got to do as a nation and as a, a people in the church, we've got to stand for those that are protecting Israel. Genesis 1, Genesis, Genesis 12, 3. Genesis 12, 3 says, I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All Psalms 122, 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm telling you, we've got uh, Psalms 20, Psalms 22, 120, Psalms 22 says, I, I, pray, I want us to pray for the, the peace of Jerusalem, Deuteronomy 28. There's a, a whole passel of verses that talk about we need to pray for God. And I'm telling you, if you touch him, you're touching the apple of God's eye. If you touch Israel, you're touching the, eye, the very apple of God's eye and God won't put up with it. I'm telling you, watch this. Uh, did you see uh, what happened to all those drones that were being going in there? None of them succeeded. Not, not a single one of them succeeded at the task of uh, destroying the Israel. You know why? The church prayed. And I promise you, if it wasn't for angels, angels are here to protect us. Psalms and 104, verse 4. Okay. Michael is Michael's over Israel, too. Yes. Yeah. So I, they're they're kind of stationed under him, right? Yes, they are. And I tell you, the Lord is our defender. He really will. Amen. So I, 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 there's a whole bunch of verses, and I hope the people will look at them. Deuteronomy 28 
And it says, and, and you, if you faithfully, faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God and be careful to do what is in his commandments, he will see that nothing can come against you that will bring you down. I'm telling you, they're, they're going to be steadfast because they've got a protector. Joel 3.1. For behold, in those days and at that time when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem. I'm going, he said, I'm going to restore the fortunes of Jerusalem and Ju Judah. Okay, uh, listen, Numbers 24, 9. He, he crouched, he, he laid down like a lion, like a lioness, and he said, God is going to roar. The, the mm -hmm. Lord's going to roar over his people. I like that, don't you? One yes. time the Lord told me, said, uh, I'm not near as easy to get along with as people have made me out to be. I'm telling you, I read the Bible. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Now, all of this you might think is uh, political. No, it's not political. It's spiritual. And so we, I want you to stand firm with Israel, do everything we can. And I'm telling you, they're, yes. they're one of our allies, and but they're the apple of God's eye. And mm -hmm. if you pray for them, uh, it'll go well with you, really will. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll print up uh, some of these then you look at it uh, on the web page or whatever. But listen, this is the time of the open door. Can I tell some stories before? Do, do you need to go yes. away or anything? No, no. Uh, here's a story. It just happened in February. I was over there in uh, Colorado and uh, uh, I was in a nice hotel and been preaching in a meeting. And so uh, here we go. I, I, I'm just as... Uh, I wake up that morning and I'm just happy as a little lark. And I say, Lord, what do you want me to talk about today? He said, I want you to talk about the voice of God. I said, okay, give me a verse. And he said, Psalms 39, verse 3. I said, okay. So I said, okay. So I jerk, jerked it open and I looked and said, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. I had my Bible open and it, on a hotel table there. Uh, the voice of the Lord is on the water. And all of a sudden, so help me God, a few of water came up out of my Bible. Uh, uh, I mean, a, a, a fountain of water came up out of my Bible. I grabbed me a napkin. I'm trying to head it off, you know, <gasps> but, and the Lord said, the voice of the Lord's upon the waters. And so I thought, boy, that was something. Wow. The moment I read it, it, it started happening. I mean, literally, uh, it was coming up through the pages of my Bible, making little guys are there. So that was February <laughs> the 17th. I'm down here at Morningstar Ministries at Rick Joyner's uh, roundtable meeting with all the prophets. And the, uh -huh. Lord said, the Lord said, tell them the water story. I said, okay, I will. So I, I, I talked to him. I said, I was off there in Colorado. The Lord told me, he said, I want you to uh, to, uh, to talk about the voice of God. And he gave me the verse. And so anyway, uh, uh, when I told him the water came up out of the Bible, so help me God, a uh, 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 water began to pour on my head from the, the from the ceiling, and here was Steve Strang, the guy that does charisma. Water go, and these people, oh. every, every one of the prophetic people in there saw the water pour down on my head. Oh my See, God! It's, it's the time. It's the awesome. time that God's gonna. Uh, the wa water is the word. Okay. Yes. And then, boy, th this is the season. Come here. Carolyn's wanting me to talk to you about the shepherds right here. She's over here. <laughs> and that's what we got to do. Uh, I told you, Shepherd's Rod 20, 20, mm -hmm. uh, 23 tells us what, what, what to do. And I'll just read, can I re I'll read a little bit. Here's, here's the Shepherd's Rod 2020, uh, whatever it is, 2023. It's, it, it's last year's. And here's there what it's it is. There it is on the screen. Yeah, that's it. And so look what it says. Uh, I'm reading now, and this is out of Daniel chapter 7, verse 21 and 22. As I kept looking, that horn was making war with the saints, the believers, and overpowering them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the Most High God. And the time arrived when the saints, the believers, took possession of the kingdom. Now, that's what was uh, 2023. Now, 2024 tells us how to do it, how to do it, how to take back whatever the devil stolen. And I'm telling you, it is the year of the open door. I want you to know that. Uh, here's what it says. You ready? It says, and after this, I heard a voice that said, come up here, Revelations 4, verse 1 and 2. And after this, I looked and behold, the door was standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard addressing me like the calling of a war trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place in the future at 
At once I came under the power of the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, and one was seated on the throne. This is a time of the open door. I mean, this is a time God will move back things for you. I've got the story about a safe that wouldn't open for six years, and this was before the Day of Atonement. December the what? 15th. December the 15th, my wife said. We were down in uh, our home in Texas, and I'm sitting there with my son, grandson, my wife, and I've had a safe. They wouldn't open for six years. I had experts that they couldn't open it. And so I'm sitting there, and the Lord said, hey, Bobby, do you know what the coming year uh, is? And I said, 2024. He said, no, no, I mean in the Hebrew. I said, no, I, I don't know what the, and he said, it's the year of the open door. I said, okay, 2024 is the year of the open door. Yes. Then he said to me, get up and go open your safe. I thought, oh, Lord, because hundreds of efforts, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe more than that, maybe less than that. But over and over and over, even experts couldn't do a thing. Then he said, get up and go open your safe. So I didn't tell my wife, didn't tell my son, didn't tell my grandson. I eased out of the room uh, and I walked down the hall, get into the, the closet area where the, the safe was. And sure enough, I, I, I stuck my hand out to, to see if I could touch the keypad. And before I could touch the keypad, the safe door burst up. Came open just like that. Uh, it was the craziest wow. thing. And inside of there was a, a safe box. It hadn't been, the thing hadn't been open for six years. So inside of there was a safe box, had some jewelry in it, had some paperwork, had some stuff like that. And so I unlocked it. And in there was an old Rolex, an old Rolex watch. And, and so uh, here's what happened. Uh, the Lord said, I want you I want you to look at both Rolexes. There's my new one. And the new one and the old one had the same time and the same date. Impossible. Wow. It hadn't been touched by human hands for six years. And so wow. son, they Googled, they Googled uh, uh, Rolex and said, uh, we have a Rolex watch here that's been keeping accurate time and accurate dates for six years. And they go, oh, no, that's impossible. That's what it's impossible. They said we build them to operate for six six days or uh, two to six days without manipulation. But I'll tell you, so help me God, the little the the Rolex had the old one wow. had it wow. exactly the same as the new one, and wow. so that shows me that God is capable of making up time, redeeming the time because yes. that, that that thing was not supposed to work, but it did, didn't it? And so, yes. okay, now, so this is the year of the open door. We need to find the ways to get into. And the Lord had told me when, when we had the Shepherd's Yard 23, he mm -hmm. said, now, Shepherd's Yard 24 is going to be a sequel to uh, Shepherd's Yard 23 tells you what to do, recover the kingdom, and Shepherd's Yard 24 tells us how to do it. And we mm -hmm. need to get into it, and we need to get down and really, really, really find out about that open door. Find out about the things God said. We can do things that can take back the kingdom. And in here, we talk about accessing, assessing uh, your uh, divine authority. I, I like that. I like divine authority, don't you? Yeah. I'm telling you, inside of you, you're unstoppable. Oh, here's Habakkuk 2 2. The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it on so plain upon tablets that everyone who passes by will be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. So that's why for 29 years we've been uh, we've been receiving the shepherd's rod and the gates were burned. And it yeah. says that Nehemiah fell on his face and wept. And it's time for leadership to weep over the condition of our nation and the nations around. And it says God gave him strategy to build the, the, the walls back. Now, here's the first strategy you and I are going to have to absorb if we're going to restore back everything that the enemy has stolen. We've got to learn how to unify, how to work together. Mm -hmm. The devil knows a house divided can't stand. So we're going right. to have to come together. Come together. I'm not talking about a, a fake unity. I'm talking about loving one another. And the, by love shall all men know you are my disciples if you yes, have love amen. one for another. And that's what we got to do. Greater have, greater that we can't get any more powerful than walking in the love of God and walking in the yes. will of God. So anyway, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to do what Nehemiah did. He fell on his face and prayed, and then God gave him strategy. He told what family needs to be, what part of the wall, and and they gave them an assignment, and they gave them watch care over what they were going to do. So this is a strategy. Read Nehemiah. They get the wall built in no time. 
And oh yeah, yep. just like in our day, there's gainsayers. There's people that go, oh, that's that that wall will never be built. And uh, yeah, it will. It was built in no time. Why? Yes. Because the people, the men, the women had a, a mind to work. It said they battled with one hand and built with the other hand. That's what God told me. You can see it here in the shepherd's yard. He said, yes. I, he said, Bobby, tell, tell, tell the people shepherd's yard 24 is a sequel to shepherd's yard 23. And he mm -hmm. says, I'm going to show you how, how to raise up an army that can battle and build, worship and work. And we need to do it. And we got it. We got the battle zone in it. Oh, we're, absolutely. this is not warm up. This is not, this is a, a, we're in a, we're in a battle for the nation, the life of our nation. And I'm telling you, it's high time to wake up out of our sleep. The Bible said, uh, rouse to reality. Oh, we need reality check in the church. And we need to find out what God said he'll do for us and to us and through us. Listen, I, I love the fact that uh, God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or dare to imagine. Aren't you glad we don't come to God because, well, I'm so sorry, Bobby. If you got here a couple of decades ago, no, now is the time. Today, if you hear Amen. his voice, don't harden your heart. Amen. Listen, uh, listen, this is the most crucial time in human history. And look who God's let live. I said to God, what are you thinking? And guess what he <laughs> said to me? Yep, I finally found me people weak enough to work in. Not not wow. weak in not weak in, uh, character and, uh, and integrity, but weak in our own ability. He said, I found me a generation that's in verse John 15, 5. Without mm -hmm. me, he can't do nothing but with him, through him, in him, unstoppable. And so I want, I, I want to tell him a little bit, if it's okay. It, it, can I tell a little bit about the, the audience with the king? Yes. Now, this, this book right here. Now, the, don't lie when you're talking about the things of God. Ask Ananias and Sapphira. Now, here's what happened to me. So help me God. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me about two feet away from me. And he looked at me straight in the face and he was sad. And he's not sad. He's the happiest man ever lived, according to the Bible. He's anointed with the oil of gladness far above all of his brethren. But he's sad looking, looked straight into my eyes and he said, Bobby, my people don't like to talk to me. He said the least attended service in any church is prayer meeting. And that's what he was sad about. And then with a twinkle in his eye, he said, but I am going to give you a phrase. I'm going to give you a, a phrase that will turn prayer from a duty to a desire, from a drudgery to a delight. He said, I'm going to give you a, a, a phrase that's going to change the whole paradigm of prayer. I said, Lord, I want it. I want it. And he said, you tell my people what true prayer is. True prayer is an audience with the king. An audience yeah. with the king. Beautiful. No potato on earth has ever given an opportunity like that. Anytime, wow. any place, anywhere, we can come yes. before the throne of God. Job 22, 28. I'll give it to you in text again. You ready? Job 22, 28 said, make up your mind what you want. Tell God what that is and he'll get it for you. That's in the Bible. Wow. Now, I'll, I'll quote it in the Bible verses now. It says, and you shall decide a thing. Then mm -hmm. you decree what you decided and the Lord will establish it and the light of his favor will shine on your pathway. Listen, wow. guys, God is willing and God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. So we got to start understanding the power of prayer and prayer yeah. changes things. Absolutely. And I, I want you to really get into the prayer book here. And I studied every place I could find in the Bible about prayer. The only the disciples of Jesus, they never said, Lord, teach us to preach. They never said, Lord, teach us to do a miracle. What did they say? Lord, teach us to pray. And did he do it? Yes. He said, after this manner pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. See, he gives us, the, he gives us uh, guidelines and principles and precepts of praying. And I'm telling you, we have not because we ask not. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall yeah. find, knock yeah. and will be open. First John 5, 14 said, this is the confidence we have in him. If we ask him anything according to his word, we know he hears us. If we know he hears us, we're totally confident we're going to get what we're asking. Well, I'm, I'm having a good time. So I'm amazing. Sure, I sure preach, uh, I appreciate 
uh, Elijah Streams. I appreciate the opportunity to come and share. And I want you to know uh, God's got confidence in you or you wouldn't be here. I'm telling yes. you, God has given us a strategy for taking back the kingdom and we've got to do it. It's Shepherd's Rod 2023 and 2024. And I'll tell you what, I can't only believe my next one's going to be 30 years. 30 oh years gosh. of receiving Amazing. visitations from the Lord. Who? Wow. The one for 24, I got the one for 24. I got swallowed by a glory cloud. So let me gone. Uh, I'm I'm tippy. Uh, a glory cloud came and swallowed just like that. I'm inside wow. a golden cloud and it's spinning like a tornado. And it's going with every revolution, the, the Lord would write strategy on the wall. And it's going so fast. Finally, I said, Lord, I don't think I can maintain this. He said, oh, no, Bobby, I'm not putting it in your head. I'm putting it in your spirit. And so he gave us strategies. And that it's so important. The, the least little phrase from God is like a. Yes. a, 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 a and that's so it is the door, the year of the open door. It, it, Do you in think the shepherd's rock. Yeah. Do you think another strategy, you talked about favor. And then I, I thought about Nehemiah. He yeah. had favor with the king and he also had favor with God because he would pray and ask the Lord. So do you think having favor upon men and just it said Jesus grew in the favor upon God favor. and men? Yeah. We need favor. I started out with that verse, Psalms 84, 11. He, he'll be a son and a shield to us. No good thing will he withhold from those that are walking upright. He will give us present day favor and favor is a, the factor. You look at people that, that uh, excel, it's because of God's favor. And God's favor and mercy is new every morning. Psalms, 20, Psalms 30, verse 5. Psalms 30, verse 5 says, Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. And I'm telling you, it says, uh, Favor, God's anger is for a tiny moment. God's favor is for a complete lifetime. Favor is the key. I'm telling you, you search for the favor of God. Yield yourself. Get into the place where God can uh, educate you about his favor. You say, how do I do that? Well, Psalms 46, 10 and 11, be still and know that I am God. Daniel 11, 32b says, but the people that do know their God, they are going to display strength and take action. So the devil knows that. So what's he going to do? Disturb you, distract you, uh, keep you from really knowing whose you are so you can know who you are. And I'm telling you, no weapon formed against us works. I say, uh, tell us that. Every tongue that rises up against us, we can condemn it. But search for the favor of God. Yield yourself as a tool and an instrument in his hands. And start saying about yourself what God says. I can do all things through Christ who infuses me. I'm unstoppable. Ephesians 2.10. I've read Ephesians 2.10 out of every English translation I could find on earth. Every English translation. Ephesians 2.10. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God preordained that we conduct ourselves in them. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It's it literally amazing. is saying God created something for us to do before he created us. And yeah. it says we're his workmanship. So I found out what the word workmanship, I looked at that in the Greek. It means the final stroke of a master artist. So that's who you are. Wow. The final stroke of a master artist. When the devil goes, who do you think you are? Go, I'm the best God could do. Okay. Wow. And, you know, I want to talk about another strategy for building the kingdom and and doing what God's called us to do, because it's it's pr obviously through prayer. That's a huge strategy is believing yes. God. We come to God believing that he is. We trust in God. And then also, what do you would you say this is a strategy? Because it, it's along the same terms as with Nehemiah that when Nehemiah went away, the people strayed. But then when he came back, he taught them the word of God. He said, all right, come back, repent mm -hmm. and follow God. So is that another strategy in our own lives is being in the word of God and continuing in repentance as we walk with God and encouraging others to turn to the Lord yes. and live in holiness and righteousness yes. and humility. Yeah, that is so true. One of the things you'll notice it as you study Nehemiah, it says the people had a mind to work, but they was a time of they assigned different segments for each each group to work in, and that's what we got to do. We got to have accountability. See, yes. we're, we're called the sons and daughters of Almighty God. We're called and commissioned to reestablish the kingdom. That's what it says. So he assigns uh, like one family would do this one, one family do the sheep gate, one family, and then they took notice of who was doing what. 
and they held them accountable. And we need some more accountability in the church, don't you think? Yes. And yeah. we need willing workers. Oh man, you say, oh no, I just come to get no, no. We want we want to see the kingdom of God established. So uh, do what God puts in your heart and your hands to do. Psalms ninety. I see this for somebody right now. I see a verse, and uh, there's a gentleman. You're setting. You're watching a a, a TV program, and here, here's what's going to happen on there. There's a uh, there's a bunch of cats meowing. Oh, I don't know. So that you'll know I've got the right person. You're watching something and the cats are coming because somebody's put the food out. But I, I see a verse for you. And uh, Philip is your name. And uh, you got it on the tag up there on your shirt. And here's what he said. Give him Psalms 90, verse 16 and 17. Psalms 90, verse 16 and 17 says, O oh Lord, let your works appear and establish thou the works of my hands. Yes, God. The works of my hands establish thou it. You've been wondering what to do in a certain element of your work and your job. Ask God to let, says, oh Lord, let your word, let your works appear. Let me see what you can do. And then establish the works of my hands. Yes, the works of my hands establish thou it. And all of this will go into uh, making uh, something, uh, getting a, 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 a creative pattern for what you're putting your hands to do. And you'll get, you'll get somebody that give you some help, legal help, because whatever you put your hands to do, someone's going to try to steal it and steal away your pattern before you can do it. But God's going to bless you and protect you. So you watch your cats come and, 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 and I realize it's you. And if I was you, I'd pursue what God has shown you to do with your hands because God said anything that's been done once, there's a better way to do it. Mm -hmm. Anything that's been done once, there's a better way to do it. So, Philip, I want you to go ahead and do what God's asked you to do. But I'm going to be just hold you to something. Be faithful with your tithing after God causes you to prosper. Oh, Lord, let mm -hmm. your works appear and establish out the works of my hands. Yes, God, the works of my hands establish out it. And the last part of that verse is, and let your glorious majesty be seen by our children. So that's wow. for Philip. I like that. Wow. Uh, that was the craziest thing. I that's saw, amazing. Right yeah. before, right before you said that, Bobby, I felt like a an in, inside, like a shift. Oh, I don't know how to explain it. You know how you feel like yeah. the, if you feel different. Yeah, I felt different right before you said that, and then I saw I was seeing a woman who was preparing meals for people at church, and when you oh. talked about how Nehemiah was, they were assigning different roles to different people. Yes. So I was seeing something the same time that you said, I'm just seeing this right now, but it was different. It wasn't for Philip, but I saw this the same time when you were saying that I saw a woman who is faithful to always prepare food Good. for church meetings and different activities. And she, that was her heart being poured out because she loved to do okay. that. And just like how God had certain families building the walls and doing this, God has you serving the church through giving them something to eat. And you're, that's a love. Yeah. That's God's love being shown through you to those people. Yes. And you may not think that you're making a huge difference, but it so blesses the Lord because you're serving others. When we give a cup of cold water to someone, one, yes. one of his followers, we will not lose our reward. So I just want to encourage you that. Obvi yeah, obviously so good. the Lord sees you yeah. and the great reward yeah. for the simple yeah. act of feeding others and loving others through that gift is just such a blessing to the body. So thank you for, for doing that. Good. We've lost a, we've lost a real understanding of servanthood. You mm -hmm. know, uh, it says he called us to, to be on his team. You did not choose me, but I chose you to be on my team. You know, so we didn't need yeah. to labor together as God's fellow heifers. That's what he says. Laboring together with God as God's fellow heifers then. So that's what we are. Chosen how, to be on his team. How would you, when someone says, I want to help, but I don't know what to do or where I should go, what would your advice be to them? That, that's where leadership comes in. That's where the Nehemiahs come in. They they see the potential. They see the, the gifting, the grace, the, the anointing, and then they help steward that. That anointing, and uh, you, none of us would turn a, a baby loose with a machete, you know. But you know, <laughs> we, God, God will uh, raise up right. leaders, and we'll teach yes. the people the vast difference between the profane and the holy, the worthwhile and the worthless. That's what it says in Ezekiel. Teach my people the vast difference between the profane and the holy, the worthwhile and the worthless. And so that's what we got to do. We got to have leadership that uh, can guide the people. And if we're yeah. a leader, that means somebody's following. 
So a lot mm-hmm. of people, they, they need to look and see if the, how many people they got following them because some people are just out for a walk. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. If you've got yes. real ability from God, people will come around you because yes. it says, uh, it says uh, that uh, the sons of Issachar had understanding of the times to know what Israel should be doing. And that's what's happening. I did a whole school on this anointing of the sons of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what the people of God should be committing their life to. And God will give us that kind of wisdom. Here's a great verse about it. Nehemiah 9.20. Nehemiah 9.20 said he gave his good spirit to instruct us and did not withhold his manna from our mouth. Wow. So listen, well, uh, it's the most important time in history. and God, God wants us to a- answer the call. Here I am. Send me. Do anything you want to do through me that will advance your kingdom. And boy, he'll do it. Oh, yes. man. People ask the world, Bobby, you've been preaching 55 years, five times a week. Do you have any advice for me? Yes, I do. Here's the very best advice I could give you. And it comes straight from my heart. Here's what swift and complete obedience. Do as quickly as you can, as thoroughly as you can, anything and everything God asks you to do. That's that's mm-hmm. the best. And he said, remind the people that half-hearted obedience is nothing but cloaked rebellion. So do to the best of your ability every kind, everything God asks you to do as swiftly as you can and as meticulous as you can. No task he sends you to is insignificant. Mm-hmm. Under, no task. And sometimes he'll send you to places where you go. Look, look, look there. Remember what the, the Ethiopian eunuch, there was a great mm-hmm. revival going on. And God said, leave this town and go down to the desert. Gaza, which is desert. And he got up and he went. Philip did. Isn't that yep. something? Yes. Uh, most of the people go, you must be nuts. Here's a big revival. And, and <laughs> don't you know the devil mocked him when he got down there to that deserted place. And he's standing on a long, dusty road. And I bet the devil goes, oh, yeah, yeah, look at there. You left the Holiday Inn and you left the Civic Center and all that. Now you're down here. And then here comes a chariot. Okay? Yes. And the Lord said, go join yourself in this chariot. And he ran along beside him. He said, understand what you're reading? And this Ethiopian eunuch, that means a black man. This was a man of politics. He was a, he was the keeper of the queen's money and Candice's mm-hmm. money. And so he said, do you know what you're reading? And he says, how can I? Except someone come up and tell me and teach me. And yes. Philip jumped up on the chariot and spoke to him about Jesus. Of whom yes. is this speaking? Of some of the prophets? And he, speak, he preached to him Jesus. And the guy gets born again and says, here's some water. What's going to stop me from being baptized? He said, you can if you want to. And he baptized him. The Spirit of God called him away. Study any theologian will tell you that's mm-hmm. how the gospel got to Africa. Was there on that wow. dusty road? Isn't that something? Yeah. Amazing. What if yes. going to go? Hey, man, I'm I'm staying here in town where all the people are. No, he got up and he went, and a and, whole nation got to hear the gospel. And the the I the story always every time I read it, Bobby, where he baptizes him, and mm-hmm. then he's caught up and he's taken yeah. to Ashdod. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. I think I always thought to myself, wow, so he's he's got to be submerged in water, you know, like all wet, yeah. you know, yeah. like not knowing what's about to happen. And then, boom, he's just caught up. And I'm sure he was dry when he was in the city. I'm sure he wasn't yeah. soaking wet. Could you imagine what was going through Philip's head? Like, no one's going to believe me. I'm sure that's what he thought, yeah. you know, because it was yeah. just so supernatural. Yeah. It, that's it. we got to obey God, whatever he asks us to do, no matter how absurd it seems, he wants us to do it. We need to do it. And uh, yes. he'll make a way where it seems like there's no way. And the plans of the Lord are perfect. He said, I know my thoughts, I think, towards you, declares the Lord. Thoughts of your success, not your failure. And it says in uh, Psalms 139, uh, uh, it says he thinks good thoughts about us continually. Aren't you glad? He's He's a good, good God, isn't he? Do you have favorite verses? One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. It says, God is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those that are trusting him. Aren't you glad you can trust him? I mean, you can cast all of your care upon him because he cares for you. Now, God didn't create you to care about your burdens. Yes, we have hardships. 
We have trials, but it says the trying of our faith is more precious than gold that perishes. And it says all things are working together for good to them who are called Amen. according to God's purpose. Didn't say everything that happened was good, but it's working together for good. And God Amen. can take a tragedy and turn it into a testimony. Amen. Hey, aren't you glad? Oh, he, okay. he's absolutely, he watches over us. Amen. He's a good shepherd. Remember the Lord is my shepherd, not was. He is my shepherd. And Amen. he leads us in paths of what? Righteousness for his name's sake. All right. I, I want you to start getting into the Bible. You say, Bobby, the number one question I get asked around the world is, how did you memorize the Bible? Uh, I'll tell you how to memorize the Bible. I studied the Bible till the, all of my fingers were holes in the pages, were print off the pages. I got a stack of Bibles like this. Is this correct, Carolyn? Yes. A stack of Bibles that we wore out. And the Lord told me, he said, you better do that again. Got to study to show ourselves a fruit. Yes. And I'll give you a verse in a, in a moment. God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. A sound mind means a mind that can catalog and retain facts. Now, mm -hmm. you can study it. Get your Bible. Get your pen. Mark it and go through it. It's just pretty wonderful because uh, inside of that, it's not print on paper. It's a person. And you'll get to know Jesus on a more meaningful way because the word became flesh and yes. the Holy Ghost, the teacher is inside of you. When you get to something you don't understand, say, Lord, show me this. And the Holy Spirit will take scripture and compare it to scripture and give you enlightenment. And uh, yes. he will He will show you what it means. And I'm telling yes. you, the, the more we know about the word of God, the more faith we have. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. God. Yes. Good. Caroline, you so, got anything? You, uh, yeah, yeah, she why oh, doesn't she here, jump on for here, a minute? Here comes here comes go. Carolyn. No, okay. Okay. Uh, God said that, that this is our shepherd's rod, the year of the open door, and it's page 128, and it, it's talking about this. Put on the whole armor of God. I mean, we can't we can't go in without our shield and our sword. Put on the whole armor of God, dress for victory. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears and let the weak now declare I'm strong. That's Joshua. That's Joel 310. The weapons of our warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. You need to get the shepherd drug and get into it and let it get into you. Finally, be strong in the Lord and end up strength of his might put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand yes, against Lord. the schemes of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood yes. but against the rulers and against the, the authorities and against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places I'm telling you yes. in, our, in our nation right here in America uh, the weapons that we're the weapons we need now are not some kind of we're fighting against demonic oppression and what's happening in our nation is demonic and we need yep. the power of God to start binding Amen. it and taking Amen. a stand. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand and will stand in the evil day. Having all having done all to stand, stand. Damn. That's what we got to do. We got to be bold and brave and very courageous. Go con go doing what we're called to do because we're not by ourselves. Jeremiah what? Amen. Jeremiah 20 11. The Lord is with me as Amen. a Dread champion. Therefore, I'm not going to fear what man can do. I'm telling you, God is with us. He's with us. And uh, yes. study about it. Oh, and it, we, in, in here we tell you how to, the implementation of putting on the whole arm of God. Oh, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers. And look what, what else it says. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you not be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. See, that's what God, that's the word of God. The belt of truth. And then it says, and putting on the breastplate of righteousness. In the book of uh, Isaiah, it says, Arise, ye princes, and all the shields, because the deadly foe is at the gate. And the shield, the number one shield we need to all and put up is the shield of faith, whereby we not be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy, all the fiery missiles of Iran, all the stuff, you know. Yes. And we're going to yes. stand, having done all the stand, we're going to stand. And I, I pray that the people will get into the shepherd's job. Here's one. God's demonstration of power. The awakened warriors will be awestruck, moving in the power with purpose. 
God's mm-hmm. going to show up and show off in such a dimension and such a way. We're going to go, did you see that? And I'm telling you what, watch this, watch this. The Holy Ghost is going to start moving in our meetings in such a dimension. We're going to be awestruck. Uh, and yeah. the Bible says yeah. multitudes, that means a bunch, multitudes believed on him when they saw the miracles he did. So we need to be anointed. And in the Shepherd's Rod book for 2024, we talk about how to put on the anointing, how to put on the mantle of God. And I'm telling you, uh, God, will, he'll show you how to be bold and brave, very courageous. And it's in here yeah. and how to take authority, divine authority. He's giving it to us. Whatever we bind on earth will have been bound for us in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loose. Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, listen, I like this one. This is 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all with unveiled faces beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the same spirit. That's one of the notes I sent that we're moving from the mundane to the miraculous. Oh, I like that. And I'm telling you what it says. This is a season of the open door. This is the time to move from the mundane to the miraculous. This is a time of entering the greater glory. Listen, yes, don't yes. stagnate. Always move up. You say, how do you do? Hunger. Blessed are yes. those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. That's a little yeah. desert here. Pass after the water brook. So pass my soul after thee, O oh God. We got to get hungry and desperate for God. This thing that we're facing now, we got we to gotta show ourselves strong. Joshua 1, 9. Be bold, be brave, be very courageous. Go do what you're called to do. You're not yes. by yourself. Yea, yes. don't walk through the valley of the shadow. Every mountain shall be brought low. Every valley shall be filled in and the crooked ways will be made straight. And here it is. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mm-hmm. flesh shall see it together because the mouth of the Lord has declared it. That's what wow. Elijah's dreams is. It's a, the voice of one in the wilderness crying, get ready, prepare. And I, I appreciate that so much. And that's what I, I love about Elijah's dreams. They want the prophetic word to come out. They want, this is the way walk in it. They don't want to go, well, you know, we want to be politically correct. You, listen, I don't want to be politically correct. I'm telling you, God says we need to move away from a people pleasing spirit. And we want to please him that has called us. Now, I'm telling yeah. you, the word of God must be spoken. It says, yes. it says in your Bible, truth is falling in the street. Therefore, there's mm. no justice. We're going to have to rescue truth so truth can rescue us. And right. John 17, 17, sanctify them, clean them up, set them apart for the service of God by truth. Thy word is truth. But listen, yes, uh, I, I'm thankful. I, I'm thankful. I, I'll tell you just what, I'll tell you what's happening to me right now. God has captured the attention of those that are watching and will watch. He's he got, He's got their attention. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Yes. Anything and everything you need, come clean with God. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins Thank and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll put our sin as far as the east is from the west, never to remember it, remember it again. That's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. The devil wooed you into some things, and now he's trying to beat you up with it and say, you'll never amount. No, God's mercies are new every morning. Thank Great you. is his faithfulness. And it says, come on now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be as white as snow. You can't fall away so far that the grace of God can't pick you up. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite verses about my testimony is this. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He inclined unto me. He heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the Mari play. He set my feet upon the solid rock. He established my goings. He put a new song in my heart. Even praise under our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust the Lord. I'm telling you, when I was growing up, uh, my relatives would say, he's 21. Isn't that something? But listen, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. And I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus can cleanse us and God can pick us up. You can't fall in a ditch. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He inclined it to me. He brought me up out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a solid rock. He established my goings. He'll do the same thing for you. He's no respecter of persons and he loves you. All you've got to do to prove that his love is to look at the cross. Greater love mm-hmm. hath no man than this. A man will lay down his life for his friends. And listen, I'm going to talk to moms and dads. Don't give up on anyone. I don't care how, how far away they've gone. The, listen, there was a guy in the Bible. He ran off and was uh, he wasted all his money and sinful living. But then he was in a pig pen and he came to himself and said, my father has servants living better than I am. I'm going to get up and go back. And I'll tell you what, 
you're going to see some of your children come back. And I want you to receive them like the, the father received this, this wayward boy. He said when he saw him, he was a great way off. And he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Yeah. And uh, listen, I want you to receive back your, your, your runaway kids. And listen, mm-hmm. you didn't, you didn't, you hadn't trained them how they're living. And God's going to bring them back and give you a fresh start. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's a great verse for you, your ancestors. Isaiah 44, 3 and 4. Isaiah 44, 3 and 4. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, floods upon dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants, and they will spring up like yes. willows by a fertile river. Psalms 112, verse 2. It said, The offspring of the upright will be mighty in the earth. So I looked at the word mighty. It means they will advance swiftly and take charge. Wow. So uh, we got a book we've written called Legacy Lineage Line, how to cast away uh, ancestral spirits. And boy, I tell you, mm. how to get your children, even if they're grown, and lay your hands on them and yeah. command a blessing to come into them. You have that authority given to you by Jesus. Wow, Bobby. Right. Oh, my gosh. I just I love when you talk about the cross and, and how you quote scriptures on the blood of Jesus and the power of the blood of Jesus. And. You don't hear it enough anymore. You don't hear about the cross enough anymore. You don't hear the call to turn back to the Lord enough anymore. And just, it always, it's because it's the word of God. It's so powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces and it separates and it's just beautiful. So before we end, would you just pray whatever, uh, whatever's on your heart? um, And then we'll, we'll ask you a little bit more how people can follow you some more. Okay. I sure will. Listen, Lord Jesus, we come to you. You you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, I thank you that you have our, our, our welfare on your heart. You have good plans for us. I pray for everyone watching, those that will watch, and even years to come. I'm praying for them right now that the will of God and the word of God will be active and alive in their life. Lord, I pray that we'll be doers of the word and not mere hearers. Lord, I pray for those that are sick, those that are tormented, and we say, be made whole. I thank you that people's bones will wax wax fat. But Lord, we thank you for loving us. Lord, we do pray for Israel. We pray for uh, intervention. We pray that God, you turn back uh, the sword upon those that had sent it. Lord, you said every weapon formed against us can't prosper. And so we claim that God. And Lord, I pray now that you'll bless our nation. I pray you'll come and help us to be focused on you living Jesus. Lord, make us more like you. Help us to be clothed in humility and Lord do anything and everything you want to do so that you can shine brighter in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. and God bless your family. Listen, what a wonderful God Call unto me and I will answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things. A great verse about prayers. First John 5 14. It said, this is the confidence we have in God. If we ask him anything according to his word, we know he hears us. If we know he hears us, we're totally confident that we're going to get what we're asking. Mm. Lord, I can't do this anymore. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart to forgive me of my sin and save my soul. The Bible said all that come to him, he'll in no wise turn away. And he's just one prayer away. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to. You, all you have to do is be desperate and hungry for change. And Almighty God, if you ask Him, He'll take you out of the family of death, darkness, yes. and deception yes. and put you into the family of life, love, and liberation. Yes. That's uh, that's Colossians 1 through 13. He takes mm-hmm. us out of death, darkness, and brings us into light, love, and liberation. It's the mm-hmm. best journey in town. So I pray that you'll open your heart to Christ. Uh, they'll help. You, you can find prayer warriors, but Jesus is just one prayer away. Lord Jesus, yes. come into my heart. Forgive me of my mm. sin and save my soul. Help me to trust you and love you and live for you all the days of my life. And I promise you this, you'll have a change. It yes. says all that come to him, he'll in no wise turn away. So yes. Lord, we rebuke it. We take authority over every demon screaming. We say, shut up. We mm. tell you to hush be still. And we thank you for this now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You have powers of believer to steal the storms around you. Okay. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Bobby and Carolyn. I hear you back there. (laughs) Thank thank you so much for being with us today. And 
I know, Bobby, if anyone types your name into YouTube, there's tons of videos of you ministering all over the place. And then where else can we follow you? Look on uh, our webpage, www.bobbyconner.org and uh, Eagles View Ministry. YouTube said, I think they're exaggerating. They said there's 23,800 videos of me on YouTube. What? There's a bunch, but uh, yeah. You can Google. You can Google, and they've got where we prophesied that there's the, the war over there was Russia and Ukraine nine years ago, wasn't it? Uh, maybe longer than that. Oh, Can't see. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And just type it in. Just type in Bobby Connor. You'll you'll pull up the good, bad, and the ugly. But uh, <laughs> we tell the truth about the truth. That's what we try to do. Yes. But Thank you, having, Bobby. God bless you. Thank you so much. Yes. And you guys don't want to miss tomorrow. We've been just so blessed today by today's show. Um, just so blessed, Bobby. Um, thank thank you. you so much for coming on and sharing. Um, and you don't want to miss tomorrow. I will be on with Kat Kerr and she always shares what's on her heart. So I'm sure she's going to come on and just share whatever the Lord's been talking to her about recently. So you don't want to miss tomorrow. Love you so very much. Have an amazing day. God bless you. Bye-bye.